Today we're going to be answering question number two from 2003 AP Calculus FYQ. In this particular FYQ, we are given the velocity of the function moving along the x-axis at v of t equals negative t plus 1 sine t squared all over 2. At the same time, we are also given the position of this particle at t equals 0. And at t equals 0, the particle is at x equal to 1. Now for the first problem, we're suppo supposed to find the acceleration of the particle at time t is equal to 2, and also to um, check whether the speed of the particle is increasing at t is equal to 2. So let's go ahead and find the acceleration of the particle at t is equal to 2. Now from this problem, we are given the velocity function. And we know that the velocity function is the first derivative. And to find the um, acceleration, we're going to find the second derivative of the function. So if we're going to use our calculator, and plug in the value of our velocity at y sub 1. Which is negative t plus 1. And on y sub 2. Let's go ahead and plug in the acceleration function. And to get the acceleration function, we're just going to find the derivative of our velocity function. So which is math 9 or math 8 for the derivative of the function. And this time, we're just going to call out y sub 1, which is our velocity function at x. And using our table function, make sure that when you push second function window, you change independent to ask. So you can plug in the value of x in the table. So if we're going to be looking for the velocity at 2 and the velocity at t equals 2, I mean acceleration at t equals 2, our calculator will automatically gives us the value of the velocity, function, velocity and acceleration at t is equal to 2 which is y sub 1, negative 2.728. And for our acceleration at t is equal to 2, we have 1.588. So we found out what our a sub 2 is, which is equal to 1.588. Now let's answer the second part of the problem which is, is the speed of the particle increasing at t is equal to 2. Now we know that the particle speed is, or the particle is increasing its speed when the acceleration and the derivative are both positive. And from our work previously, we found out that the velocity function, which is equal to negative 2.728, is negative, and acceleration at 2, sorry, at 2 is also is positive. Therefore, we can say that the speed Since our acceleration and velocity are moving in a different direction, we can say that the particle is decreasing at t is equal to 2.
Now for problem letter B, we need to find all times t in the open interval between 0 and 3 when the particle changes direction and then justify your answer. So in this particular problem, all we need to do is to find the critical point of our um, function to figure out when is the particle changing its direction. So to find the critical number, we know that all we need to do from f prime of x, if we equate it to zero, we'll be able to find the critical number of our function. And since in this particular problem, we are given the velocity, which is our first derivative, all we need to do is to find the intersection of this function along the uh, x-axis, and we'll be able to find when the particle is changing its direction. So let's go ahead and look at the graph of our velocity function and find its point of intersection along the x-axis. So we know that in our function, y sub 1 is the velocity function, and y sub 2 is acceleration. So let's turn it off and add in y sub 3 equal to 0. So we can find the intersection of the derivative function, which is our velocity, and the x-axis. So when we push graph, you will see a crazy uh, graph right here. And all we need to do is to um, find the critical point of our uh, velocity function from the given interval, which is at 0 and 3. So push window, and let's set x minimum to 0 and x maximum to 3. So our calculator will only show the behavior of the graph between this interval. And here we can see that there is a uh, point of intersection right here on our graph. And to be able to uh, accurately um, find the point of intersection, we will use our calculator. So second function, trace, and find its intersection, push 5. This is our first curve, and the second curve, which is our x-axis. And the calculator is giving us 2.5066. So we can say that our critical number right here is t equals 2.507. So this is our critical number. And uh, from here, we can say that the particle is changing its direction from t is equal 2.507. And this is how we answer problem letter B. Now for problem letter C, we need to find the total distance traveled by the particle from t equals 0 until time t is equal to 3. So for letter C, we are supposed to find the total distance traveled by the particle from time t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 3. So we need to find the distance traveled by this particle from 0 to 3. And to find the distance of the particle, all we need to do is to use the velocity function and find the integral of the velo absolute value of the velocity function from 0 to 3, dt. And using our calculator, we'll be able to uh, figure out how or what total distances of this particular particle using math 9 to find the integral of the function 0 to 3. Absolute value, go to math, go to num, and the first option is absolute value. And y sub 1 is our v of t, so vars, and y sub 1 dx. And this will give us the total distance of the moving particle from time t equals 0 to time t is equal to 3, which is giving us 4.3338. So we can say that this is 4.334. 4. 
So this is the total distance. And this is how we answer problem letter C. Now, to answer problem letter D, during the time interval from 0 to 3, what is the greatest distance between the particle and the origin? And then show the work that leads you to your answer. So for letter D, we need to find which, um, from the interval 0 to 3, which is the greatest distance traveled by the particle. So to answer this function, we need to uh, find the position of the particle. And to find the position of the particle, given the velocity function, all we need to do is to uh, find the integral of our function and compare it to our endpoints, which is at 0. So let's say it's g of 0 for the first interval and g of 3, which is the upper limit of our interval. And we're also going to compare it to our critical number, which is at 2.507. So to find g of 0, we know that the particle um, started at x equal to 1 at times at t equals 0. So writing out the model, we have 1 plus the integral of the particle from 0 to 0 of our function v of t dt. And for g of 3, it's going to be 1 plus the integral of v of t, this time from 0 to 3. And to find the distance of g of 2.507, which is our critical number, 0 to 2.507 of v of t dt. Now using our calculator, so we have here v of t, and we have here our derivative function. So let's go ahead and add another set of function, which is the model that we have here in computing for the distance traveled by this particle from the given points. So we have 1 plus math 9 from 0 to x of our velocity function, which is y sub 1, dx. Go to table, second function graph. And it will give you the value of y sub 4, which is the value of the model that we just um, showed in our work right here. So we need to find the, the distance traveled at x equals 0, or g0. And here, it's giving us 1, g of 3, which is negative 1.197, and g of 2.507, which is our critical value which is giving us negative 2.265. During the time interval, uh, what is the greatest distance between the particle and the origin? And among the three values that we have here, g of 2.507, or the critical number, is um, giving us the higher value. So therefore, we can say that This is how we answer problem letter D.